And we are continuing with our exploration of nutrition labels. So today we're going to talk about introduction to nutrition, health, and method of production claims in Canada. And um, those of you who are following along in the course at Niagara College in the Nutrition for Food Technology course, uh, you would have just finished uh, uh, one of your assignments, which was uh, making a presentation on a food product that had interesting nutrition trends related to it. And what was interesting was I wanted to see that presentation just so I could have a chance to meet you through this online course and get a better sense of who you are and um, engage with you in some conversation. But uh, what was fascinating was how many of you in your in your presentations would say, well, this is an excellent source of, of vitamin vitamin B. And, and, and part of me was chuckling because I'm like, I'm not marking that. that you, you would have noticed that wasn't in the rubric, but you can't say that, da, da, da. Except that, uh, of course, um, that wasn't in the rubric. And so I wasn't, being, uh, I wasn't penalizing you on that early presentation. But when you, as a food technologist, are designing a food product or working with an R&D team, Oftentimes, marketing or advertising is going to come in there and say, hey, you know what? We want to be able to put this on the label. It's all natural. It is an excellent source of vitamin C. It is gluten-free. It is made in Canada. All of these sorts of claims have very, very um, rigid formatting that the Canadian Food Inspection Agency requires so that when you are making those claims, you are absolutely crystal clear on what you are representing within that product. So at the end of this video, you'll be able to describe the different types of health claims in Canada, including nutrient content claims, disease reduction claims, structure function claims, origin or method of production claims. And rest assured over the next week or so, I will break each one of these apart into its own separate video, but I really wanna just introduce you to the fact that there's all these different types of claims and what the heck they are. <laughs> next, we'll use the guide to food labeling for industry to source up-to-date information to validate what these claims are. And we'll understand a little bit about the burden of evidence required to maintain those claims. So. Yes, we are using the guide to food labeling for industry. This is the the one and only source. Well, no, there's actually two sources. You can go into the actual regulations, and we do keep cross-referencing the actual re regulations. Most of them are in the food and drugs regulations. In the B1 section, the very front section, um, which covers a lot in labeling in particular, and but that said, the Guide to Food Labeling for Industry has been created as a, as a guidebook and sort of a, a, a facilitation manual to walk you through the process. But let's just jump out here and refer to some of these important regulations that we really need to be aware of. The first one, when I say FDA, that is the Food and Drugs Act, and it is the enabling act for the Food and Drugs Regulation. Um, you'll have a course in regulations at a later point, um, but... This is a really, really important statement, and I, I, I often joke as a food scientist, I should have it. Uh, as some of the some of the statements in the Food and Drug Act, I'm going to tattoo on my, in the inside of my arm, except that I shouldn't because every once in a while they change. Um, but this slide says, no person shall advertise any food, drug, cosmetic, or device to the general public as a treatment, preventive, or cure for any of the diseases, disorders, or abnormal abnormal physical states and that's important that here in Canada we have some of the more strict food um, health claims laws and so you can't go out there and say that food is going to prevent disease there are very 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 few exceptions that have been substantiated through extensive scientific review in general food food as we know has a has a really important impact on disease but we can't be out there advertising food as a as a mitigating aspect of disease it, it it's a fine fine balance that we as food product developers have to play 
two, let's jump into section 5.1. This is also from the Food and Drugs Act. No person shall label, package, treat, process, sell, or advertise any food in a manner that is false, misleading, or deceptive, or is likely to create an erroneous impression regarding its character, value, quantity, composition, merit, or safety. And what on earth does this mean? Well, it just means that whatever you are saying on your label has to be in a way that is not causing confusion. And you have to be making truthful statements. You can't. You can't be out there lying about your product. So you can't, you can't, you can't correct and prevent disease. You can't lie. And just a quick summary, you have to be absolutely clear to the consumer what is in that product and not give a fake sense of what that product could possibly do for you. What else? Oh, this one's from the Food and Drugs Regulation. And all information that is required by these regulations to appear on a label of a food or drug other than a drug for human use in dosage form shall be clearly and prominently displayed on the label and be readily discernible to the purchaser or consumer under customary conditions of purchase and use. So you can't be out there using weird and wacky ways of expressing things so that you can somehow pull the wool over your consumer's eyes. So you have to be crystal clear about what you are saying and you can't, you can't be misleading. Now there are a few different types of claims and in a minute we're just going to jump right into the guide to food labeling for industry because it, it, some of these claims will make sense and I want you to get a sense of how to use the guide to food labeling for industry so you can look this up for your own products. But th when we're thinking about claims, oftentimes we're thinking about first off quality and origin type claims. So or, origin would be like, um, where was it made? Is it product of Canada? Is it made in Canada from domestic and imported ingredients? Was it roasted in Canada from imported ingredients? Or uh, that origin claim um, is really important for many consumers. Origin could also mean local. And do you comply with the ability to call your product a local product? Quality implies things like, is it pure? Is it natural? Is it fresh? Is it um, no preservatives added? These sorts of things are important to many consumers. And there are different um, qualifiers within that ability to make a quality statement. And so in many cases, so for example, if you want to say, is it all natural? What, what, what on, what on earth does natural mean? Does it mean that it came from the ground? Does it mean that it hasn't been processed? Does it mean that it's fresh and not preserved in any means? So we have clear descriptions about what that means. Where we are going to spend a lot of time is in nutrient content claims. And these are the, uh, the, the claims that are very, very uh, substantially linked to your nutrition facts table. So nutrient content, if you really think about it, it's, it's where you're making a claim about how much or how much content is in your product. So this is, uh, I'm sure you've seen these before an excellent source of vitamin C or a good source of iron or contains, contains, I don't know, no trans fat. That's a negative nutrient content claim, actually. Um, low in calories. That's a nutrient content claim, too, because it's talking about the energy content of your product. Now, health claims. Oftentimes when we see these claims, we sort of pool them all together as a health claim. But there are a few substantiated health claims that we can make in Canada. And they fall into a few different categories. Are they disease reduction claims? Are they structure function claims? And so, um, or are they general uh, health claims? These three, uh, we generally group them into three categories. General health claims would be like, um, eat a wide variety of fruits and vegetables for a healthy diet. There's nothing really specific about that sort of statement, but it does imply a healthy lifestyle and health and wellness in that statement. There are a few disease reduction claims that are allowed. So for example, consuming foods high in soluble fiber may improve cardiovascular health. And, and I, do, I, I do say 
we have to go and qualify exactly the wording that's that's permitted but there are a few a few types of health claims and and particular disease reduction claims that are allowed so eating a diet high in calcium may reduce the incidence of osteoporosis this food is high in is an excellent source of calcium or eating a diet that is low in sodium and high in potassium may re, um, uh, improve, cardiovas uh, improve cardiovascular health. This is a food that is low in sodium and high in potassium. These are very, very specific and very, very limited in scope. Then there are method of production claims. So things like, is it GMO free or is it um, gluten free or is it um, organic? These sorts of um, claims are also important and they have their own set of qualifiers that each of the uh, unique requirements for these methods of production type claims are, are, are listed out. And in that method of production claim, you can also put in there um, where you're using third party trademarks. And so some of the third party trademarks that are on food packages are indeed regulated symbols. In other cases, they are symbols that a food manufacturer may be paying out to a third party certifying body where that um, if you've proven that you have met the requirements by the certifying body, let's say the non-GMO project or the heart uh, or heart wise um, uh, heart and stroke foundation of Canada's um, health check uh, they have one in particular. If you have met the requirements for that certifying body, then you can have that symbol on your product. And in other cases, companies will just randomly make up symbols. And in it's important that those are compliant within, within the um, frameworks of the regulation. So I think, oh yes, this is my reminder to myself. What we do need to go to is the Guide to Food Labeling for Industry, because that is our point of reference for all of this. And so uh, I always joke, we are friends. I am not going to edit this. We are going to go straight to the Guide to Food Labeling for Industry. And let me go back to the table of contents because I want to walk you through how on earth do you find this. So when you're in the industry labeling tool, we've got those core labeling requirements at the beginning. And nutrition labeling, yes, we've covered that off. Um, if I click on nutrition labeling, that really talks about the fact that you need to have that nutrition facts table and what needs to be in that nutrition facts table and how can it be formatted based off of the different sizes of packages that you've got. And we also have the section on compliance testing. And I know that uh, you likely have watched the compliance testing video. And if you haven't, that's a fun one because we walk through and show how the Canadian Food Inspection Agency goes about doing those rapid check compliance tests and deciding if they need to send it out for further testing. Now we're starting to get into the claims. We talked about allergen and gluten claims before, but now we can start to think about, do we have composition and quality claims? So let's just jump out and take a quick look at the headings here. Composition and quality claims, that's where we're looking at. Pure, 100% pure, 100% this, uh, true, genuine, entirely, completely. Is it from concentrate? Is it vegetarian or vegan? Is it a highlighted ingredient claim or a negative claim? A negative claim implies no added preservatives or no trans fat. That negative is, is sometimes there. Is it a quality claim with a guarantee or a testimonial? Does it have a certification related to it? Um, are, are there things related to the grading of that product? You'll have a, a, a class in regulations where you talk about grading systems for fruits and vegetables or meat products or eggs. Um, fresh, is it is it uh, making sure that you've got a proper claim on the net quantity that's in there? How about light? Light uh, used to be much uh, bigger issue back in the 80s and not so much now. How about comparative claims? That's where you're looking at comparing one product against another. Um, and so maybe this product contains 50% uh, less sodium than our mainstream product. Making sure that you're phrasing those comparative claims properly. Let's jump back out. 
So we talked about composition and quality. We've got our health claims. And I will be doing a more in-depth on each of these tabs moving forward. So first off, you've got to figure out what kind of health claim it is. We will have to uh, have a further discussion on when is it a food versus when is it a natural health product? Because sometimes food products are food products and sometimes they are actually more like health supplements and um, herbs and different um, herbal remedies that are borderline. They look like food and they act like food, but they're actually classified as natural health products. Now, um, just as we mentioned before, there are disease reduction claims and therapeutic claims. And what's what's really interesting here is these table, um, these table tabs that are there, because the tables are where you see the actual uh, qualifying statements and what you are allowed to what you are allowed to say on that product. Oh, I completely forgot about probiotics. Oh my gosh! So if you want to make a probiotic claim, the use of uh, different microorganisms within that food product that uh, they have the different ways of framing it and also the aspect of implied health claims. We've talked about this before that uh, oftentimes in social media or within advertising, uh, food companies will imply that something's there, but um, you can't actually make those uh, specific claims. So we will jump in and have a much deeper dive into each of these, but What's interesting is these. Uh, if you're if you're out exploring, jump into these tables. This is where it's really the most fun because this is where it's going to tell you exactly what you can say. So jumping out, if I want to say anything about protein, I can say protein helps build and repair body tissues. But then I may have a qualifying statement. I can say carbohydrates supply energy, or I can say uh, what else. Vitamin A aids in normal bone and tooth development. I can't say any anything that isn't on this list. I can't go and say vitamin A will help you see in uh, see better in the dark. Nope, it's not on this list. I can say vitamin A supports night vision, but I can't say vitamin A will help you see better in the dark because it is not on this list. And this is half of the, the fun and part of the headache of being a food product developer in Canada that you can't say anything that's not on this list unless you are ready to go and uh, make an interim marketing authorization or uh, go and petition Health Canada for additional um, things on this list. And honestly, I've been working in this field for about 20 years and I've seen maybe two or three th things be added to the list in that time. So these are the things that you can say. Um, but again, just because you've got one table, you've got all sorts of different tables here. So function claims, coarse wheat bran, you can say a product, let's say uh, this breakfast cereal, 100 grams of this breakfast cereal contains seven grams of fiber from coarse wheat bran, which promotes laxation. As you know, laxation is uh, passing bowel movements easier. That's what you can say. You can say what's in this table. You can't say anything else. And that is really quite a mind-blowing scenario for a lot of product developers. We've got health claims, oh, method of production claims. There's where we're talking about natural, we can talk about flavor descriptors, we can talk about is it a food from genetically modified organisms? Is it kosher? Is it halal? Is it homemade? Is it um, natural meat? Is it raised without antibiotics? Is it raised without hormones? All of these different things. We talked about minimum and maximum processes already. Yes, I'm making a video. What? Oh, okay. I'm being told that I'm supposed to go and eat dinner after I've talked about all this food. And, and I was just told, please continue. How about organic? You want to talk about organic? There you go. Oh my gosh. All these different claims. So you, here are where you can find your language requirements for all your different claims on what you can say and what you can't say. What else? Origin. We talked about country of origin. And again, this is meant to be a really high level discussion. I will do a more detailed video on each of these different tabs as we go along. I, uh, from a timing perspective, because this is a nutrition course, I want to emphasize my efforts on health claims and on the nutrient content claims. Oh, there's our nutrient content claims over here. And 
what are the conditions and what does what happens when we make those nutrient content claims and how do we go about um, as soon as we've got them let's say we've got an omega-3 and omega-6 claim that we want to make now we can see this is what we can say here's the conditions that's requiring it and then what are additional requirements on that label the moment that we trigger that claim all right so again this was meant to be really really high level and just introduce you to the fact that we've got all these claims and that within the guide to food labeling for industry you can start to research how these claims need to be structured on your food products so in uh, another one of the videos that i'm doing right now we are using esha to go about substantiating especially the nutrient content claims is again the nutrient content claims are the ones that are triggered by our nutrition facts table specifically so that's where we're going to spend um, our first round and develop the videos for that specifically first because that's going to be our priority in this nutrition class. Alrighty, so if you have questions, do reach out, do ask as you're going along because there's always more complexity and these videos are really high level and intended to introduce you to a lot of information. If you need more interpretation, feel free to reach out and we will try and get you an answer as quickly as possible. All right, take care and we'll talk to you again real soon.